Hello, it's Alex. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm going to be focusing today on how to sew a yoke into a shirt using the burrito method to enclose all the seams nicely and beautifully. I asked if anyone was interested. Lots of you kindly said you were, so that's what I've done. I have demonstrated using this shirt pattern. This is now my third one. Uh, it's the assembly line oversized shirt. The only difference this time is I've slightly shortened it and I've now got a Peter Pan collar, which is part of an extension pack. The same technique will apply to any button up shirt that you might have. So it doesn't necessarily need to be this particular pattern. So I'm gonna try not to waffle on and get straight to the tutorial. I think a good starting point is to look at the pattern pieces and where we've got to so far. And this is the assembly line oversized shirt. It's going to be pretty similar with any shirt pattern that you might have. If you are familiar with this shirt, you'll know that it's obviously oversized and ordinarily is longer than this. And it also has pockets in the side seams. Because I've tried to squeeze a lot of shirt out of not so much fabric, I've had to cheat the length a little bit. So because I've made it shorter, I'm also omitting the pockets because otherwise they would dip below the hem. Um, you might also at some point notice that there are a couple of little nicks on this edge here. Tiny little bit of uh, fabric missing. Um, and again, that's just where I've had to try and squeeze the pattern out of the fabric. And that little bit there is within the seam out. So I'm just about getting away with it. So this is my back piece and as I say it's going to be pretty much like this with any shirt pattern. This has got a back pleat. So my back pleat looks like this and on the wrong side it looks like this. And sometimes you might wish to have the pleat this way on the fashion side or the public side of the fabric. Usually it's your own choice. The other thing you might also have on that centre back is you could have a loop, you know, like a sort of hanging loop. Um, that shouldn't really make any difference. So that's my back piece. These are my two front pieces and we're at the point where the button band is in place. Now the nature of this pattern is that the button band is very sort of minimal and fuss free. So it just turns under onto the wrong side like that. Also doesn't have any top stitching on the front. And that's just the nature of this particular pattern. Other shirts may have a separate button band that you've already put on and you may have already done some top stitching along the front here. That's all fine. And if you had a pattern that had a dart, which this one doesn't, the dart would have already been stitched in and pressed. So they are ready to go. And then in addition to that, I have my two yoke pieces. So they are absolutely identical. This pattern has got a couple of notches on the back of the yoke pieces, which I've done a little snip for. That's all the pieces that I need to get going. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these yoke pieces and I'm going to turn it so that it's the right side out and so that the two shoulder seams here are facing me. And then I'm going to get my back of my shirt and with the wrong side of the fabric of the back pattern piece facing the right side of this yoke, I'm going to line up, in this case, the notches on this yoke line up with the edges of this pleat. So I'm gonna line those up, whatever notches you've got on your pattern, line them up and pop in a pin. And just sort of, doesn't, not too carefully, just put that kind of in place. And then I'm going to take my second yoke piece, pointing it in exactly the same direction as we did before. So with the shoulder seams facing me, but with the right side of the print facing the right side of this back pattern piece. I'm also going to line up those same notches. So in effect, what we're doing is sandwiching the back piece in between 
the two yoke pieces. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing in the corners. So I'm going to take this yoke piece, this back piece and this yoke piece and make sure they line up and again put a pin in. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this corner here. Then what I'm going to do, and it kind of helps to lift it really, is I'm going to make sure that these edges on all three pieces of fabric line up and pop some pins in. And the reason I say that it sort of helps to lift it is that quite often this edge here on the back pattern, on the back piece, has a bit of a curve to it, whereas the yokes tend to be dead straight. So sometimes you have to do a little bit of manipulating to get the fabric to all line up, but you basically want the three pieces to be sitting nicely together. Sometimes it just takes a bit of a bit of manipulation, a little bit of fiddling. I prefer to have my pins facing this way, but that's just personal preference. And then once I've done that, once these are all aligned, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and just sew a seam along that line there in whatever the pattern suggests the seam allowance is. So in the case of this pattern, that's one centimetre. Okay, so make sure there's nothing untoward on the back and that's where we are. So this one is right side to right side and this one is right side to wrong side. So I'm going to take this to my machine. That seam is completed. I've back tacked at either end as usual. You might find it's a little bit lumpy under this area here if you've got a loop. This is a time to just check that that seam is all sitting nicely and you've not got any um, little pinches. And sure enough, I have. Just to demonstrate how not to do it, I have got a little pinch here. So um, hopefully the camera's picked that up. So all I will do is just unpick that little bit of stitching Make sure it's nice and flat and re sew it down. So I've re sewn that little bit that had a pinch. Just double check that everything is looking relatively neat. We're going to press it in a minute, but there's no folds, no tucks on this, which is the right side. And check the same on the wrong side. Fold the yoke over and just check that that's all looking as it should do. Okay. So this is the point at which we're going to take this over to the iron. I'm just going to be pressing this here, but I'm going to use the nose of the iron to sort of push the seam upwards towards the yoke. And I prefer to do this on the right side of the shirt rather than on the wrong side, because sometimes you end up just pressing a fold in. Um, but obviously you need to be careful of your fabric. So I have got the most grotty old press cloth with the once was a piece of silk organza um, and I can still just about see through it but whatever press cloth you might have and of course an old tea towel does the job I would just push that put that down and we're just using the nose of the iron to push it upwards and get a nice neat line there and you want to make sure if you have got a pleat or anything under here that you're not getting that caught just to clarify the yoke on the inside is also facing up, so that's there. That's all nicely pressed and this is the point at which you need to decide whether you're going to be top stitching this seam here. If you are, what you generally do with a shirt is you top stitch through the outer side only, the outer yoke only, and not the inside. So you need to fold that back under there Fold this back over, make sure that that seam is facing upwards and I would put some pins in just to make sure that you've definitely got that seam allowance caught underneath. I would take that over to the machine and top stitch, as I say, only with the outer yoke and not with the inner yoke. But I'm not doing that, so um, let's pretend that I have. 
and regardless of whether I've top stitched it or not this is now the time to just trim down this seam allowance in here so obviously if you've done top stitching you're going to have some stitching along there the best way to do this so you make sure you're not accidentally catching anything is to fold everything away from the um, top stitch or from the seam allowance and just trim along there if you've got a particularly a thick fabric you might want to grade those seams so you make sure that you when you trim it the seam that's closest to the outer edge to the edge that you can see um, is the longest and then trim the next one down slightly in from that and so on but you don't really need to do that unless you've got something bulky and even something like a denim it doesn't really matter too much it's kind of part of the look isn't it when you can see the lump of the seam underneath it in the yoke but personal choice okay seam allowance trimmed and this time i have tucked away the inside yoke underneath so all we've got facing outwards is the outer yoke and the back piece and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two front pieces and line them up right sides to right sides along this shoulder seam and pin it in so that one is going there and its friend is going on the other side So we're looking something like this and I'm just going to sew both those seams at whatever seam allowance is required on the pattern. Okay so both shoulder seams have been sewn that's with the outer yoke and the front piece on both sides and the inside yoke at this point in time is just hanging free. So now we get to the fun bit. So what I'm going to do, ensuring that that is still pointing downwards, that inner yoke, I'm going to just flip these two front pieces over here, just for the moment. And then I'm going to roll up this shirt back. And as you can see, as I do that, it begins to reveal the yoke underneath. I'm just going to leave that sitting in the space of this yoke and then I'm going to do the same thing with the two front pieces. So just move that pin. I'm just going to roll them up. You don't want the rolls to be too big if you can help it. Just leave that sitting there. As I roll up these front pieces we can begin to reveal this shoulder seam that I just sewed on both of them and at the same time you can see that we've got our yoke piece for the inner that's also revealed itself so what we're going to do is we're going to match that shoulder seam there with that shoulder seam there and pin it together but because this one has to do a bit of turning in an ideal world, you don't really want those seams to match 100%. You just want to wiggle it down a smidge. I know that's not very technical, but maybe three millimetres. And that just stops that inner yoke tugging. So you want to pin these up at both ends, as I say, just slightly short. And of course, the most important thing when you're pinning these seams is that you make sure you're not catching this fabric that's in here that you've just rolled up. So it's as well to just put your hand under and double check that that's just pull that forward by just a few millimetres on both of those. So. We're just shy of a few millimetres of the edge. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, twizzle it around so that you can see your original stitching 
and take it to the machine and stitch exactly over that same seam that you just stitched before. If you end up being slightly north of the stitching, so towards the cut edge, it's not the end of the world, but you really don't want to be south of it towards the yoke itself because that's going to ruin things. So just re-stitch that on both those shoulder seams. I've completed those seams, so just to show you, that's what we're looking like, hence people calling it a burrito. You've got a sort of hammock effect with the rolled up back and the rolled up fronts inside. And obviously when I was sewing this seam for a second time, making very sure not to catch any of these rolls. And we're almost finished, but you might at this point want to just trim those seam allowances down. Because my pattern is a one centimetre seam allowance, my seams are not particularly massive anyway. Um, but it doesn't hurt just to trim a little bit of that excess off. Now is the time to do it. This is, by the way, a Nanny Iro fabric that's been in my stash for a little while waiting for something. So we're now ready for the big reveal and all we do is this is obviously our neck and we just reach in through the neck and very gently pull out those rolled up pieces. That's the two fronts. Here comes the back. This is one of those things that sewists refer to as birthing. <laughs> And then, to give it a tug, what you've got is on the outside your yoke, all beautifully seamless and lovely, and possibly top stitched if you decided to do that. And not only do you have a wonderfully neat outer yoke, you've also got an absolutely beautiful seamless inside yoke. You've got your seams all beautifully encased in here. No overlocking, no zigzagging, none of that. And that's a burrito. Once you've done it a few times, it just becomes second nature. You might want to baste the neck edge here and the edges here where you come to fit your sleeves in later on, if that helps. I don't generally do that. I don't feel that you need to. Just taking that tiny few millimetres when you add that... Um, so that extra semen really does help this inner yoke. It means it's not tugging, which sometimes they can do. And yeah, you've done a burrito. Really hope that was helpful. The same technique can be used for pretty much any top that's got a yoke. Um, I really like it because it keeps those seams all nicely neat and tidy away inside and it's a great one if you're using a finer fabric and you're going to do the rest of your seams with a French seam or perhaps you're using a flat furled seam because then everything inside is really beautiful. But there's no reason why you can't use that same technique when you're just plain old overlocking your seams, which is what I've done this time with this version. Um, there is also a bit of a sort of step up from that using the same technique. You can enclose if you've got a top or a dress where you've got a neck and um, armhole facing in one and you can enclose those in one. It's really not that difficult but somebody else has already made an absolutely brilliant tutorial showing that so I'll link it below. It's from the sewing revival for some of their patterns over there. So that's really worth going and having a look at especially as we move into spring and summer and we might be making things that are sleeveless. Um, but yeah overall I really like this burrito technique Obviously I really like this shirt pattern as this is, as I say, my third one and I've been looking for an excuse to use this fabric, um, this Nanny Iro fabric, which I will also link, um, for quite a long time. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that. I will be back on Friday as always for Friday Sews. Please subscribe if you haven't done. I'm going to start to do a few more little technique videos, I think. Um, and yeah, I will see you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.